Destiny is a game that's almost three years old, and in that time, millions of players have forged their legends while wielding mighty weapons into battle. Now, a little over a year ago, I decided to catalog a list of what I believe to be both the best and worst guns of Destiny's year one. And in the years since, you all have continually given me your opinions on the exact same subject. So, I decided to do it again, and in today's video, I'll be listing out what I believe to be the best, most impactful guns in Destiny's Year 2, covering all of the Taken King expansion. Now, these guns may not have all been the most OP, but in my opinion, they had an absolutely massive impact on the game, the meta, and the way Destiny was played throughout the Taken King. So, alright then, let's go ahead and get started. Number 5. The Hawksaw now, the Hawksaw was truly one of the most dominant primaries in Destiny's history. While not generally used too much in PvE, this gun was a staple of PvP all throughout the Taken King. Reliable, powerful, and flexible, the Hawksaw was and still is a weapon capable of extremely consistent performance in the Crucible. The gun's mixture of stability with very easily managed recoil, range allowing it to compete with hand cannons and even scouts at the earlier thresholds of long range, and a time to kill putting it in the top bracket of primaries made this weapon a constant force to be reckoned with in the Crucible. And to put the icing on the cake, the premier version of the Hawksaw was outright sold by the Crucible vendor after the April Spring update, coming stock with counterbalance, Fitted stock and small bore, this weapon saw widespread use across the Crucible, blazing its legend alongside our own. Number 4. The Sleeper Simulant Oh man, the Sleeper Simulant. Doling out high energy charged blasts and demolishing elite tier shielded enemies in one fell burst. One of the new exotic weapons brought forth in the Taken King, the Sleeper Simulant was something of a legend well before its exotic quest mysteriously appeared on the 7th of every month after collecting a series of fusion rifle parts that were scattered across patrol zones and bringing them to the gunsmith. After the start of the Taken King, Guardians became very well acquainted with time-gated content, locking quests, legendaries, and exotic items behind timed events. And as the Taken King went on and more and more secrets were discovered, Guardians became obsessed with the hunt for the mythical Sleeper Simulant. It seemed like every day a new thread was posted on the biggest Destiny subreddits, speculating on just how to trigger the Sleeper exotic quest, with individuals posting vague screenshots, glitches to enter unused mission and patrol spaces, and wild theories for how to start off the quest line. But one day, it just happened. A mission, curiously titled The First Firewall, quietly appeared on Guardian's directors, taking place in the Cosmodrome. And from there, we were off. A wild quest ensued, utilizing hidden codes and numbered knights, a collection quest, and finally, depending on how lucky or unlucky you were, a wait for a warsat on Mars. But it was all worth it. The sleeper became something akin to a Yallerhorn Reborn, fueled by hype and dishing out massive damage beyond what most any other heavy weapon could produce. A weapon so powerful, so versatile, it could be used to solo one of, if not the most difficult encounter in the game against Oryx, the Taken King himself. The legend of the Sleeper Simulant, and the journey to get it, will forever be a part of the mythos of destiny moving forward. Number 3. The Exotic Swords now, one of the most amazing additions to the world of Destiny was the introduction of legendary and exotic swords as a heavy weapon class. Now, this was a long time coming, since Destiny's 1.0 when we all took part in a small story mission titled The Sword of Crota, in which we got our very first taste of just what it would be like to have a melee themed weapon in Destiny. It was the first, but definitely not the last time we would dream of being able to carry swords into battle in every corner of the galaxy that Destiny took us to. And it definitely seems like Bungie was listening. Immediately upon finishing the Taken King story and defeating Oryx the first time, we're presented with a questline that ultimately rewarded us with some personal, permanent swords of our very own design. And while it was great to have a new legendary heavy class, what came next was even better. After finishing the sword quest, suddenly we were presented with a much longer, much more difficult quest that rewarded one of three exotic blades, the Ray's Lighter, Dark Drinker, and the Boltcaster. 
These swords were stronger, sharper, and came with amazing abilities that would change the way we play the game. It's really hard to overstate the power of these swords. The Razelighter and Dark Drinker in particular dealt such massive amounts of damage per swing that they truly left all other weapons save the Sleeper Simulant itself in the dust. And as time went on, these swords became the staple for setting damage records against many of the game's enemies. To the point that now, they're the premier method of destroying Axis, the final boss of the Wrath of the Machine raid. Sure you can and spin to win indeed. Number 2. The Doctrine of Passing Oh man, you knew this one had to be on the list. The Doctrine of Passing was the gun to use in Crucible for much of the Taken King due to its dominant performance, fantastic perk roll capabilities, and an extremely competitive time to kill. The Doctrine is of course the Trials of Osiris auto rifle from the Taken King, and it featured one of, if not the best possibilities of perk combinations for fast rate of fire weapons in Destiny's entire history. The gun by design would always roll with persistence, a fantastic accuracy boosting perk in its own right, and if you were lucky enough to score counterbalance alongside it, you had yourself a nigh unmatchable laser beam in the crucible. The versatility and sheer power of the doctrine harkened back to a time in which primaries were in a much better state, able to reasonably fight off shotguns and other special weapons. And the weapon almost single-handedly ushered in the high rate of fire era for autos, encouraging the use of guns like the Arminius D and the often sought after Soul Stealer's Claw from Varix and the Reef. Now the Doctrine was not a perfect weapon, no gun is, but it served its purpose of being an extremely good primary weapon in a time before a series of constant nerfs would, in my opinion, stagnate and bring the meta to the place it finds itself in now. Much like the vaunted story of the mighty Suros regime and high impact autos before it in year one, the Doctrine and its archetype fell victim to nerfs, albeit to a slightly lesser degree. But there's no doubt that just like its predecessors, it had a massive effect on the history of this game. And finally, the number one spot is, of course, the Hung Jury Legendary Dead Orbit Scout Rifle. I know, I know, but let me explain. The start of the Taken King was filled with wonder. Guardians getting to explore a new world space in the Dreadnought, testing out new weapons, trying on new armor, and playing on new, and some previously exclusive to PlayStation, maps in the Crucible. But no one was expecting that Arak Jalal, the humble representative of the Dead Orbit faction, would be offering a weapon so awesome, so powerful, so perfectly rolled that it would shape the way players handled PvE for many months to come. But upon visiting the tower and checking the newest vendor items, there it was the God Roll Hung Jury Scout Rifle. Rocking Triple Tap, the best stability perk in its class with handlaid stock and Firefly, this gun was set up for success from the very start. A mid-rate of fire archetype of Scout Rifle, the Hung Jury made its impact immediately known, as those who were already subbed to the Dead Orbit saw the excellent mixture of perks and decided to give it a shot. They were met with one of the most solidly performing weapons in the history of the game, tearing through content and feeling like an absolute blast to play with. The Hung Jury basically had it all. Word spread quickly though, as post after post after post made their way throughout the Bungie forums and the Destiny subreddits of people basically singing the praises of this weapon. And they were well warranted. With a massive stability max of 97, landing consecutive precision shots was almost a non-factor triggering constant procs of the triple tap perk and Firefly for added damage, which now counts as solar by the way. The Hung Jury was truly a perfect PvE gun. In a game where legendary primaries like the Fatebringer and Vision of Confluence set bars that were seemingly unattainable by the rest of the guns, the Hung Jury came closer than anyone else. Giving players a weapon that felt good, worked well, and was easily attainable for the majority of the Taken King's time in the sun. Unfortunately, this god roll vendor weapon was replaced by a less effective variant after the April Spring update, but for those guardians who had a chance to snag it before it was gone, they wield one of the most powerful, fun, and legendary weapons Destiny ever had to offer. And that's what this game is all about, creating memories and forging your own legends. But alright, there we go guardians, that's it for my personal list of the top 5 best guns in Destiny's year 2, covering mainly the Taken King. I've no doubt that you guardians have your own opinions on what you think were the best weapons in the Taken King, so be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And of course if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe to support Planet Destiny. 
But alright, that's going to be it for this one guys. Thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to read your comments. As always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.